Ladies and gentlemen, it is a most exciting day. For today, I'm going to be showing off one of the more interesting aircraft concepts that emerged from the US and Soviet Union military machine. The mighty Convair X-6 and the Tupolev Tu-95 uh, were experimental aircrafts designed to negate the need for silly combustion engines and fully embrace the fallout timeline of everything nuclear. Times, they were different back then. This was the, uh, the pre-Chernobyl days of nuclear glory. It was in the, you know, in the 1950s and 60s, nuclear fission technology was all new and shiny, and it was believed that it could be made so compact and affordable that nuclear fuel would become the primary energy source in the US. And, you know, I'm not talking about primary energy source in the context of electricity generating power plants. I'm talking the primary energy source for everything. <laughs> a notable inclusion here is gasoline, as in replacing gasoline. So several car companies jumped at the chance to produce concept cars that would use a steam engine powered by uranium by uranium fission by way of a small nuclear reactor on board in place of an internal combustion engine. Uh, one of the more famous concepts here was the, uh, the Ford Nucleon, a car that inspired the cars of the Fallout games actually, although when you destroy a car in the Fallout game, it, they explode with like a mushroom cloud, which is not how <laughs> nuclear actors actually um, explode, I guess, if you were to shoot it with a gun. I don't think anyone's tried this. Guys, anyone here owns a nuclear reactor, please try this and let me know. Uh, if you don't reply, I'll assume the worst, and uh, I apologise, I guess. So you're, you're, this has taken a dark turn, let's move on. But yes, the uh, Fallout games, uh, the cars in those were inspired by the, uh, the Ford Nucleon, which used one such uranium nuclear reactor. And at the time, Ford envisioned a future where gas stations would be replaced entirely by full-service recharging stations, where vehicles would pull into once every 5,000 miles and have their reactors swapped out for a new one, as in, like, entirely replaced. It was, it was truly a mad time when you look back. <laughs> Some of the more passionate space fans among you may well be aware that at the same sort of time, Project Orion, which was a program focused on creating a spacecraft with nuclear energy, uh, a topic... Actually, I should probably leave this topic uh, for another for future discussion in case I run out of things to make for other videos in the future. I could, I feel like a spacecraft would probably tie in quite well to this channel, don't you think? Uh, but there, as well as this, there were um, patents filed for creation of nuclear-powered locomotives as well. Uh, though nuclear trains never really got further along the concept stage, at least not as, not as far along as the car and aircraft propositions. But, you know, as I kind of wanted to show in this video, we got considerably close to nuclear powered aircraft. And the one I'm the one I was going to create in this video, well the original plan for this video I should say, was uh recreating the US Air Force Convair X6. You know, like I said, there was the Soviet Union equivalent of the Tupolev Tu ninety five, but I, I, I just liked the look of the Convair one more. But uh well, I mean, I can show a clip of the uh, the craft I came up with and you know it's very difficult to come up with um to make that sort of shape in Kerbal Space Program with its very blocky parts, really, and very thin wings, so I kind of just had to make my own passenger plane. But I feel like a passenger plane, in a way, is a bit cooler, because you can do tourist missions and stuff like that. But, you know, the big thing here... Wait, by the way, I'm... As you may or may not know, there are no such things as nuclear jet engines in this game. So uh, I'm using the mod Atomic Age, although if this was like, this was stopped being worked on in 1.05, so there's like a continuation. I'll put a link in the description. There's like some guy continued it in a, in a pack called the Recycled Parts Pack. That's the, uh, the pack I'm using anyway. Regardless, yes, um, so for those of you that don't know, um, jet engines, they kind of heat the air inside them and they use, uh, they burn liquid fuel, essentially. A nuclear engine does not do this. It uses a nuclear reactor to heat the air in its turbofan, and that's how it generates thrust. An interesting shot, side shot of this, which you know, isn't very applicable on Earth, uh, as in, in the real world, but it has a unique advantage for us Kerbal Space Program players, because this means that a nuclear power jet engine does not require intake air, as in it can... F what I'm trying to say here is that the engines will work on places like Juna, Eve, and Jewel, although the latter you might struggle due to the immense gravity of Joule. Interesting fact about Joule, actually, going on a little tangent real quick. By the way, I'm not really talking about the footage on screen. I'm hoping it would just, you could kind of just figure out what's going, what's, what's going on. I'll get to why in a second. But the thing with, interesting thing about Joule is it's, it's actually a little bit smaller than Earth to give you a sense of scale. Like whenever I play this game and I go to Joule or Lathe or anywhere like that and I see Joule in the distance, I'm like, my goodness, that is a, this Joule is very big. And then you think, wow, and, and Earth is even bigger than that. Just to give you a sense of scale of, you know, the difficulties faced by uh, Earth scientists and, you know, players who are brave enough to try real solar system, which is something I still haven't tried, actually. But, uh, yeah, the, the reason I'm not talking about the footage is because I don't have 
any footage at the moment either. I've made the craft. I haven't actually, I haven't decided what I what I want to do yet. So I'm going to just talk. I'm just going to talk and until I've reached a point where I feel like I've talked to a satisfactory amount. I mean, I'd like to try and aim for sort of 10, 10 to 20 minutes for videos like this. But, uh, you know, we'll just have to see how long it lasts, really. <laughs> how, long, how long it is before I run out of steam. But no, the reason I'm, I'm having to do it this way, because this is not normally how I do Kerbal Space Program videos, but uh, it's now Thursday. I have been working on Green Harvest Episode 8. Had to think for a second what episode number on. And I, I had to come to the executive decision that it's not going to be done for Saturday. Because I got a date lined up on Friday night. So I'm not going to have much time to work on it then. Uh, and then it's obviously got to go up on Saturday. So it kind of needs to be done by Friday or Saturday morning at the very, at the very uh, latest. Like sometimes I've finished videos on Saturdays. But I don't really like doing it that way. Because it all feels a little bit rushed. A little bit like, I like to have a relaxed line on a Saturday. Regardless. So I thought, right. We just drop Green Harvest and push it to next week and make something. So I was going through my like folder of things, interesting topics I could talk about if I ran out of ideas of a video that week. And so this week I was going through and I had an e I emailed myself all the way back in like 2016, which is ancient times now when you think about it, guys. And it was just said, um, talk about the Convair X6. I'm like, what the hell is the Convair X6? Sorry, what the heck is the Convair X6? <laughs> so I googled. I'm like, ah, why haven't I done this before? This seems like a really good thing to talk about. So. So yeah, I've been meaning to do some sort of Eve, uh, Eve, Eve, uh, plane aircraft. Hey, Eve aircraft. Funny anecdote, actually, because I think I know for a fact I'm not the only player that did this. I've seen other people say, I think I'm pretty sure, no, it wasn't a Blunderbirds episode, but I have seen, I basically these days, whenever someone gets stranded, my username gets tagged. I do see all of the tags <laughs> on Reddit. So, and a lot of them are people sending space planes or air, or like rockets with air breathing engines to Eve on the assumption that uh, they, they will work on Eve's atmosphere. And I did this. As a, as a young player back in 2015 or 2014, I don't know, when I went to EVE for the first time, I was like, what? I don't understand what the big fuss about EVE is because it's got an atmosphere. I'll just send a, a, a space plane with um, with, uh, with a, I think it was like, what are they called? Whiplash engines? Because at the time, the rapier was completely obsolete because whiplash engines were so overpowered and then 1.0 happened and everything changed. But back back in the day, like if you if you want to know what I'm talking about, have a look at, search into YouTube, Mr. Overfloater or some of Hazardish's older videos that they were like the only two doing the big SSTO missions and they are, those SSTOs look a far cry from what we do today. That's just because the whole technology was different because you just do intake spam with whiplash engines. Anyway, this is, I'm getting a bit diverged. Let's just move away from this topic. Uh, talk about, yeah, the first thing I said to Eve was a space plane and I went, I was there, picture the scene, right? I was the flag fluttering in the wind. I got my Kerbal to the space plane again, pressed launch, and then I came to the realization that uh, there are jet engines to actually work in um, acidic atmospheres like Eve or whatever the atmosphere is on Venus, which I guess Eve is based on. So yeah, uh, I feel like I, I did have a look to see if I could dig out one of my old, old save files with lots and lots of uh, abandoned crafts. This is that was going to be the original concept for Blunderbirds. It's just stranding, like me being the one that stranded Kerbals or going back on old saves and trying to find Kerbals that were stuck somewhere. But then I thought I had the better idea of maybe. This could be something I could do with the community. So that's kind of, well, that's the backstory for Blunderbirds. So um, where are we now? I would like just stop talking now and then record some footage so I have some sort of conclusion. So this is our past map over and out. And uh, well, the time for me is 8.23. I'll let you know what time it is when I do the next bit. It is 11.30 at night, my dudes. Just kidding, but uh, when I came to do the commentary again, it was 11.30 at night and I realised that, uh, well, I, I didn't want to wake people up, so I've just postponed it to doing it today. I'm leaving in about an hour and a half, so I have to hit render and hopefully this thing can get uploaded and stuff. I'll try and automate it using a script on my computer somehow. Uh, well, I don't know. But anyway, some of you may be confused. Here we are, touching down on Eve, by the way, in case you needed it um, annotating. <laughs> uh, just to clear things up, some of you may be confused as to why our initial uh, descent into Eve's atmosphere resulted in disastrous consequences, but the second attempt we entered with no with no consequences whatsoever. And the reason is because this video is a big bamboozle. I had to uh, disable re-entry heating in order to enter Eve's atmosphere. I completely forgot that the giant aeroplane wings are completely terrible. I opened the ladder on the wrong side, but didn't even need it anyway. Um, they're terrible when it comes to heat resistance, so this thing was never going to be able to re-enter Eve. Even if you had like re-entry heating set to like 20%, it's a little bit absurd. Here we had a little puzzle. I had to uh, 
complete, by the way, a little mini game. I had to get back on the ladder as the ship started to roll down the hill of its own accord. So that was that was fun. That was what I needed when I was trying to get this video finished on time for schedule. I feel like I don't feel too bad about the bamboozle because the point of this video was to showcase the nuclear mod and the Atomic Age mod, I should say, or at least the continuation of the Atomic Age mod. The Atomic Age mod, can't even talk. And then obviously just to show off the, uh, the use and talk about a little bit about nuclear engines in the context of jet engines. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I really should have taken this thing to Juna or even Jewel. Somewhere, actually, no, Jewel would have been a terrible idea. <laughs> but somewhere like Juna, actually to Juna, there's no other place in the solar system where this would be applicable to, uh, just to show it off. But I thought, let's just try and be ambitious and go to EVE. Because once you're on EVE, as you can see, you know, wings work really, really well because the atmosphere is just so dense. Uh, but I should have anticipated the fact that the re-entry heating may be somewhat problematic as it was. Uh, so, you know, you live and learn, don't you? But I hope you enjoyed this video anyway. Perhaps I will probably, I probably won't, but maybe in a live stream, I'll revisit this and uh, modify this craft, like leave it untouched, like keep the air aircraft the same, but create a sort of heat shield system such that we can actually enter EVE and do it all properly. But, you know, this was mainly to showcase the mod, and I did quite like the way this plane came out in the end, so I do hope you enjoyed it. This was, like I say, I had to make this fairly quickly. The intention was Green Harvest Episode 8, but that thing, ain't, it just ain't ready, guys. And I want it to be, I want it to be good. I don't want to rush Green Harvest. I'd rather rush these sorts of videos. Uh, yeah, I don't know what. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, there are some links on screen now. Um, that was it. That's, that was the end of that thought process. Have a good day, my dudes. Hopefully next week will be Green Harvest on Saturday and Wednesday will be Planet Coaster Series Extraordinaire. So goodbye.